Greetings, and welcome to the Open-Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland, and I'm your host. Today, we'll be covering a grey encounter. That's my grey encounter. In fact, a double encounter, a grey and a Greer encounter. That's Dr. Stephen Greer. And we're going to discuss what really happens when contact occurs. In August 2013, I attended a two-day CE5 intensive training session at Bond University on the Gold Coast in Australia. It was hosted by Dr. Stephen Greer. Greer is the founder of the Centre for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, that's CSETI for short, as well as the founder of the Disclosure Project. With the help of a fellow volunteer named Dave, I have pieced together the order of events over the two days, the emotions experienced, the consciousness achieved, and the extraterrestrial and ETVs, that's extraterrestrial vehicle sightings, for your listening pleasure. Do enjoy. Day one, Bond University. I entered the crowded lecture hall at Bond University with an odd mix of anxiety, trepidation and excitement. After I had greeted a number of the other volunteers, I found myself seated in the front row only a couple of metres from the man himself, Dr. Stephen Greer, man of mystery and chronic sandal wearer. If I were to describe the man, I would say charismatic, engaging, authoritative, and knowledgeable. Physically, he is a mountain of a person who obviously works hard to keep both his mind and body in good and healthy shape. The mood in the lecture hall was nothing short of buoyant. Expectations were running high about this modern day disclosure guru. The training itself was eclectic, spanning information on technology assisted consciousness, lucid dreaming, and cosmic consciousness through to a large amount of weird science and freaking magic, as the CIA might say, with Dr. Greer interposing his own experiences with popular conspiracy theory, past hard-fought victories, and encounters via the CE5 initiative. Skywatch 1, Springbrook Mountain. I had made arrangements to pick up Dave on my way up to Springbrook Mountain earlier in the day. As I approached the place that Dave was staying, which was located at the foot of Springbrook Mountain, my navigation system inside my car and on my iPhone completely shut down. When the navigation system restarted, it sent me five kilometers off course and pointed me back towards Brisbane. Fortunately, I had a hard copy street directory in the boot, thank you hubby, and I checked Dave's address manually, something I hadn't done for quite a few years. I then ignored my rebooted navigation system and my iPhone and arrived at my destination 10 minutes late. Having apologised for my lateness, Dave informed me that a similar thing had also occurred with his own GPS system. And to quote him directly, my GPS system failed over three times. It has never failed before. This actually was the first of many electrical devices that have either failed or played up since. Later in the evening, we were both informed that a number of other CE5 participants had also experienced this same electrical interference. I'll let you draw your own conclusions from the statements above. Having finally made it to the top of the mountain, the heavens opened with rain and instead of heading further up to the reserved contact position, we were directed to drive back down the mountain a few kilometres to the local Springbrook Hall. Performing the Puja in Springbrook Hall. It had been decided that we would perform the Puja part of the initiative in the hall and hopefully, once the weather improved, make our way up to the top of the mountain. And I'll add in here another quote from Dave. 
there was a strong feeling of both celestial protection and human interference during the first part of the evening. I did expect that interference would be involved in the weather closing in. However, I was not sure if this was celestial, which is to ward off those energies not ready to experience, or human intervention of the harp kind. That follows Dr. Greer around and has him zeroed in with every bit of surveillance technology known and unknown. Once we had all found the Springbrook Hall, we were directed to form a large circle with our chairs and Dr. Greer began to recite the puja. The energy that grew or formed inside the hall was amazing. It was practically tactile. During the puja, I felt the presence of a number of energy entities and at one point, following a very long meditation, as I opened my eyes, I perceived a white male mist-like shape standing only a few feet in front of me. Within seconds, the energy entity dissipated into the ether, leaving me with the feeling that not only me, but everyone else inside the hall were under a celestial form of protection. An immense feeling of peace and love flowed over me during the meditations and puja, which I will be endeavoring to repeat through my own meditations at home. And here is Dave's take on the situation inside the hall. Having the hall at Springbrook available set the perfect scene for group cohesiveness. A group of largely unknown people taking a leap of faith with each other to step through the Rubicon of accepting the process and energy and flow of consciousness free from ridicule. Once this cohesiveness, this safety was felt, then the energy in the room was extreme and the puja ceremony blended well with the unity consciousness felt during that session and how that helped clear the area and activate it. I felt largely that our meaning and reasons there were to activate that era of Gaia with our spiritual consciousness. This was felt by the omnipresent TDIS and other earthly entities that live beyond our light spectrum. During the meditations, I began to remote view in the most astonishing detail, visualizations of distant places and life forms. My physical body during all of the above was cold. The only heat I felt was when I joined hands with my neighbors following the meditation and prior to our departure from the Springbrook Hall. Dave remarked directly to me, I felt communication through my heart chakra. Evening one, Springbrook Mountain, the top. Fortunately, the weather improved enough for our now close-knit, in mind, spirit and body, group, to make it to the top of the mountain. Many thanks to Greg Kernigan and the team at Smurf, that's short for Springbrook Mountain Extraterrestrial Response Force, for providing such a wonderful venue for this special event. And a personal thank you to Greg for driving myself and many, many others up and down the muddy track in his four-wheel drive beastie. Much appreciated. On this evening, the group as a whole noted 15 visible ETVs in the sky, as well as an individual ET standing to the north of the group. Two smaller ETs were spotted later on in the evening to the west of our group. On a personal note, I observed two smaller ETs in a treed area directly behind my position in the contact circle on the east side of the group. And I witnessed on two occasions a bright white orb-like entity pass through the center of the circle at great speed. I have to say, at this point, I really didn't think things could get any better. But they certainly did. And this was only the end of day one. Day two, Bond University. As I entered the lecture theatre for our second and last afternoon training session, I instantly felt lethargic and sluggish. It had been a late night, I'd been up to 2am, but I had slept in and up until this point had been relaxed, happy and looking forward to another day in Greer land. I took my place at the front again and leaned back to absorb as much knowledge as possible from the Swami of all things ET. The training yet again was eclectic, spanning Dr. Greer's own ET experiences, 
meditation techniques to be employed that evening, genetics and DNA through to the biosphere. All subject matter enlightening and enjoyable. Question time on day two was less enjoyable. However, due to a couple of overly aggressive but determined trainees. Even Dave remarked on the feel of the room on day two to me later that evening. I felt a very different sensation during this day and a presence of the CIA or others in the crowd that follow Steve around. That or some type of mind controlling influence activating within some souls that have integrated more misinformation than others. Evening, day two, Springbrook Mountain. As I drove up Springbrook Mountain on our second evening of contact training, I was in a complete funk. I can't explain why, as I had no reason to be anything other than contented at this time. Once parked at the top, I grabbed my bag of crystals, which had been blessed the night prior in the puja, and popped it into my pocket. I felt instantly better as the crystals' protection surrounded me and pushed back the negativity of the afternoon. Greg Kernigan of Smurf kindly lent me his infrared telescope, and as Dr. Greer started to recite the puja, I made my way to my buddy for the evening, Dave who was standing at the circle's edge, staring into the clear night sky, and began to scan the surroundings with my new Smurf toy. Within seconds, I fixed on a grey-coloured ET, approximately four and a half feet tall, with a spindly body that was chilling out, literally chilling out, looking at the night sky, and listening to Dr. Greer's puja, which, by the way, was quite beautiful. The grey ET was standing upright about probably five metres from where Dave and I were standing directly in front. Unsure of what I was seeing, I studied the ET for a good minute before alerting Dave to its presence. I passed Dave the infrared telescope and after a moment or two he confirmed that he also could see the entity. In fact, he could see more of the entities and we passed the scope between us until our eyes were accustomed to the dark and we didn't need the scope any longer. I think Dave and I high-fived at this very point. I asked Dave for a comment on what he had seen later that evening and he said, through an infrared telescope I saw numerous spindly thin ETs or earthly entities that live outside of our light spectrum within 10 meters of the group. Once our eyes were accustomed to the darkness, it was obvious that our whole group was surrounded by ETs in small clusters, ranging from five meters in through to 30 meters deep out. And none of them seemed to be interested in really us, they were all faced out from us, looking up at the sky. It was quite surreal. Dave and I then passed the telescope between ourselves for a couple of minutes before turning to alert Cam, who was Dr. Greer's personal assistant on the evening, of our spotting success. As the puja was still being sung by Dr. Greer, and was not to be interrupted, we were told, Dave and I started uh, to perform what's known as a CE5 contact protocol, um, which is a, basically standing in certain positions, whilst I observed the short grey dudette or dude. You, I really couldn't tell what, which sex, if, if there is definitive sexes. It was at this point that I started to doubt what I was seeing, and the thought is this really an ET ran through my mind? The ET promptly turned around and stared directly at me, silently answering my question as if I had shouted it across the field. Eventually the ET departed once the puja had ended and Dave and I rejoined the group and began the consciousness meditation. Dave went on to state the following. 
I felt more connection with the group and Gaia during this session and was testament to when more time is spent with a cohesive group who begin to trust and experience the flow of consciousness together, then more experiences occur. My heart chakras were pinging off the scale with waves of sensation washing over me. During the meditation, I drifted out of my body and experienced a length of time that was only a couple of minutes but was a long journey in the astral that many of the group were with me on, including Dr. Greer. Perception and back to reality. My perception of our world has changed since this event and I am able to pick up on energy entities, both positive and negative, more easily than before. My sixth sense is also working overtime as I have had a number of accurate epiphanies about the people in my life. It's been an interesting few weeks. My neighbour and good friend Sarah recently described me as on a mission mostly due to the fact that I completely spring cleaned my entire house in less than a week. I threw out a heap of objects that I've been holding on to for all the wrong reasons. The relief in letting them go has been immense. Once I finished the spring clean, I decided to renovate my study and the working space for this magazine and now this podcast. A little voice told me the area was a touch depressing. It isn't any longer, in fact it's a mix of crisp white, bright yellow and hot pink. Colours I wouldn't have picked in a million years a few weeks back. I've also made a number of mental health decisions. One, not to sweat the small stuff. Two, to be less controlling in regard to my daughters. After all, they have grown up. Three, to kick off a date night with my husband once a week. Four, to put more energy into the activities that bring me and those I love pleasure. And five, to p challenge myself more in my work, in the magazine and now with the podcast. And what about Dave, I hear you ask? Well, I'll quote his response. I have had ongoing TDIS activity within me, around me, omnipresently. I feel a very active presence with me to help me hold and maintain the vibration that I've worked to get to and need to maintain through this period. The more C5 work that I do fine tunes these TDIS flashes, from sharp flashes in the corner of my eyes to more visible shapes of something closer to 10 to 12 foot tall that only just fits inside my room. I've also felt an acceleration in activity in my life and I'm more aware of that. I'm going to let Dave, my C5 buddy, wrap this up as his comment below is spot on. It was great listening to Dr. Greer and having the information that I have digested in earnest over many years reaffirmed. Hear, hear. Now on the second evening Skywatch, Greg Kernigan and the Smurf team, and isn't that a great name, that Springbrook Mountain ET Response Force, took some amazing photographs, which I have posted on our blog page at www.tomspod.com. The photographs are copyrighted to Smurf, but please go and check them out and see some of the activity that we experience and I have just discussed in our podcast today. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, 
simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com.